Okay. <laughs> Aww. Good Gatorade. Really, really good. Uh... Um, yeah. We're not sponsored by Gatorade, by the way. They have not <laughs> invested in us in any way, shape, or form. Hold this bit. Oh, right. This is what we had last time. You're going to hold it there. Make sure you I'm talk right it, into I'm it. I'm going to hold it here, and I'm not going to hold it anywhere else. Right. And that's going to make sure that it, it works perfectly. Right. And we won't have to reshoot any more episodes. Yep. We're going to keep every single episode, and uh, wow. we're never going to have to reshoot anything. Ever. Wow. No. Welcome to the Scully and Jim podcast, where we don't know what we're doing, but we're doing our best. I'm Scully, and I'm nothing if not a whore. I'm Shem, and I am not a real worm. <laughs> And today we're going to be talking about My Hero Academia. We're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to try to go season by season, talk about what we, what we like, what we don't like, characters we love, characters we hate, predictions for future season, seasons. Oh my God, I only had one shot. Hopefully we get through them all before uh, the podcast is over. If not, that will be our first part two. Um, and we're going to try to stay in chronological order, but if we bounce around, please forgive us. Um, one of us has ADD and the other is just very excited to be here. So Right. And and just um, in terms of spoilers, we are both currently like up to date with not just the anime, but also the manga. Yes. So... But we'll, we'll, say, we'll say hard spoiler warning for the anime and maybe like soft spoiler warning for the manga, because I don't think we need to go into the manga today, but... Maybe we'll bounce around. We'll see what's what's yeah, what. If if it comes up, we'll, uh, maybe we can. I don't know. Put we'll put a little spoiler of, warning. Yeah, you have you you have that type of technical know how. Yeah, right? I'll just go. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. Great. We started rewatching My Hero Academia today because we were like, okay, well, we should probably brush up, and we started watching it from the beginning and i forget sometimes how fucking good it feels to rewatch a show that you love so much from the very beginning and get those same feelings over and over again after you haven't watched it in a long time and and i think especially i think especially for this show um i think a a lot of let me gather my thoughts um especially for this show because it moves so fast yeah there's a lot of shows that like i try to go back and watch uh, especially with anime, there's a lot of shows that I try to go back and watch older episodes, and um, the pacing is just so different. So like we slow. we watched, like, we actually watched an episode of uh, One Piece today, yes. and f that was written. The first episode came out in 1999, and it's just very clear, like the difference in pacing. Like they spend a lot more time on these frames of like silly faces and a lot more time wacky these... zany characters doing yeah. wacky zany things and it's it's in a show like this i think one of the reasons it's so popular is that it is so story driven and you only need to yes. see a little bit of it to know what it's about and very character driven as well that's also the thing here we should be facing each other so we don't get echoes in our mics um so that's also the thing too is that it's also very character driven mm -hmm. where every every character gets their moment in the spotlight and you can connect with them very easily you learn pretty much right away what everybody is about like you know obviously izuku is our wide-eyed protagonist he's very uh, he's very naive he's very uh he thinks the best of everybody you know we have katsuki who he's you know more obviously antagonistic he's kind of like the school bully type he's very you know aggressive you have kirishima who's like everybody's best friend and you have ochako who's the girl next door you have ida who's very structured and cares about rules like you pretty much get a feel for what everybody is like immediately and you can connect with them because of that and like that is at least mm -hmm. what drew me in when i first started watching this show i was like oh my god like all of these characters you kind of get their trauma like immediately like for especially Izuku and then like Ochako, you learn about her family mm -hmm. and then Ida, you learn about his family well, and his and, brother. And to zero in on that for a second, I mean, yeah, that's that's it. also what got me 
I think the most invested was was they didn't spend a lot of time um with the world building like they kind mm-hmm. of they I I think I I looked at it, I took a note it's like not even like a minute so it's it's like there's a minute and 30 seconds or something at the beginning where we get to know basically the like the base character of Midoriya mm-hmm. uh, and then we have the intro sequence and then in the next three minutes of content we get like 80 percent of the world has superpowers uh super uh, uh, heroes are are it's like a career and there's also like celebrities. a celebrity yeah and also there's like a bit of corruption in there with like inherent it's kind of hinted at where it's like it. your success as a hero isn't really as determined by like how much good you do it's how much good you're like seen to do yeah it's how many crimes you stop in numbers how oh. many uh how flashy like how big your your big move is like with with uh mount lady comes in with the canyon can it's like a uh massive kick it's like all right that's that's awesome everybody loves big giant battles i fucking love that too because i i love how they introduced that so early on because i think horikoshi horikoshi spoken about how who's the writer of my hero i don't know if you guys know this um he has spoken about how my hero academia is very much influenced by his own love of western media of like american film and and american superheroes and things like that where in america in particular in hollywood celebrity is like a huge deal it's a big thing and his incorporation of celebrity in hero society and how absolutely if we had heroes they would be basically celebrities and there would be that level of like not everybody's a hero because they want to be selfless like sometimes people just like want to be in the spotlight and they address that corruption immediately in the story and i fucking love that because it makes it so much more real Mm -hmm. and believable and i think so much more interesting too because we are immediately introduced to the idea like not all heroes are good people right like i said it's in it's in that first like less than a minute of content that we get that that we see our main character who are they they stand up for what's right Mm -hmm. even though they're powerless yes they will they will always stand up for rights which right oh, and the fact so that they're good. powerless it's something and this is I, I wrote this it's something that's like teased in other shows for like an entire season if not more is like how their childhood affected them as an adult yeah um, we never learn about that right away it's like but this is like right off the bat we're saying because i'm powerless and because i don't have superpowers it doesn't hold me back it pushes me to try even harder and like in a world where we've already established that like everybody has superpowers and everybody wants to be a hero like we see that yes. like, the first scene of the school it's like uh you know uh, we've got the grades back but like why am i even going to talk about it of course all you all of you want to go to the hero track yeah and is you go and talk and to those class. but like yeah. we know what you're all trying to do obviously so, who wouldn't want to be a hero you know so it's it's very necessary i think to put out so early what is setting midori apart because Yes. Like as base character, oh. he's just the same as everyone else. I want to be a hero more than anything else. But he has a reason. He has something that's driving him that isn't driving any. Like there's no one else in the show that is quirkless and yes. is trying to be a hero. And I think that one of the main themes in the show, obviously, we. I mean, you could say in most superhero stories, one of the themes is what does it mean to be a hero? But with Izuku, it's particularly like, natural talent and natural inclination towards being in that line of work versus hope and determination and and striving to do it because this is something that you are called to emotionally like physically ethically like this is like you want to make the world a better place versus i want to be a hero because i'd be good at it and be better than everyone else like bakugo who's saying i'm gonna be the most famous richest most yeah. popular hero of all time. He he still is clearly showing that same sort of drive to be the greatest. Mm-hmm. He does want, but it's just it's fueled by such a different desire at the beginning, and it, yeah. it, that changes throughout the series. I I definitely believe. No, you're so right, and it but it is like because because saying that like yeah, Bakugo has a natural inclination, but you're right, he is so incredibly driven. Like he is dedicated. He's put in the work. He's really, really smart, mm-hmm. just academically. He's gifted with his quirk. He knows what he's doing. But he has also been told his entire life that this is what he was meant to do. He's got a great quirk and he's been supported by all the people around him. Mm-hmm. And I think 
I mean, I think easily Midoriya has more drive than he does because I think it's coming from a more pure place. But Midoriya also hasn't had any of that support and he's had to fight against people's expectations right. of him and things he that he's... Feel, he doesn't oh. feel as comfortable. Like, Bakugo knows... He says it. I know I'm good. He's he like, that's just, he's, I'm not trying to be arrogant, expecting... but that's just, that's just... I'm not trying to, like, you know, but that's who I am. Yeah, he's expecting because he's got this natural power and because he's... He already has worked so hard uh, that he's he's just going to become the best. So he doesn't feel the need to try as hard anymore. Yes. He's like, if I can get into UA, I'm golden. And I think that Bakugo thinks that he knows what it means to be a hero. He assumes that it's being strong, being infallible, getting the job done, and that's it. He doesn't care about being charismatic. He's Which granted, not... that's, that's what hero society is purporting to people. But like yeah. that's the very obvious... Um, uh, like qualification for being a hero. Like, but that's... there's also that level of like charisma and like how mm -hmm. much people love you and like does it when being a hero? What does it mean? Does it mean to have a kind and good heart? Does it mean to be empathetic and selfless? Does it mean to be like decisive, charismatic, influential? Because we see heroes that embody all these traits, and then All Might in particular, who embodies all of them. He's strong, he's kind, everybody loves him, and that's what makes him the best. And I think Bakugo kind of loses sight because he just assumes that like all it really takes is a good quirk. And then, of course, we end up learning on and you know, throughout the season, season three, season four, it takes much more than just being strong and being good with your quirk to be a hero. You well, need to have that softness and people need to like you. And I think in like the Endeavor versus All Might you know, Bakugo versus Midoriya, there's obviously parallels there with what their ideals are, what their goals are, what their priorities are in terms of what it means to be a hero and how they present that heroicness to the public. Right. You know? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Sorry. You need to make like your thoughts? Yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> No, it's just, it's just a good point, and there's not... Lemonade break. Yeah, I'm going to mm. start a new thread because I don't have anywhere to go off of that. Yeah, feel free to start a new um, thread. Shem made us some lemonade. It's absolutely delicious. It's one of his many gifts. Thank you. You're welcome. It's wonderful. It's very tasty. Uh, I'm sorry you guys can't have any of it. Um, I, I also like... So back to just, you know, backtracking to the, the world-building aspect of it, it's like we get to see right off the bat like how this society is. We see that it's like... All right, we've established that um, the the technology level kind of seems to be like, all right, we're pretty much like in modern day. Like it seems like people have cell phones, there's trains, there's like modern buildings, there's modern technology exists. In people this are world. rushing to work. Yeah. It's a the, capitalist society. And, and, and heroism and superpowers are so normalized that it's like, it's a common enough excuse to be like, oh, I'm sorry, a villain rampaged. I I'm going to be late for work. So. Yeah, I don't know what time I'm going to get in. I love that little detail. I think yeah. that's so funny. But, but, and it, it's so funny and it's like, it's clearly there for humor, but it's also there for like, it's just showing it's how world like, building. You're this right. is part of the normal day to day. This is so normalized that it's like, it's an integral part of what society is. And I think that that's so cool how well they build it off the bat and all the answers they give us. Like, they're not like teasing this, like uh, trying to like explain it like throughout the series, throughout mm -hmm. like multiple seasons. It's like right off the bat. And that's a, that's a, um, it's like a green light for fan fiction writers, I think. Oh, Especially absolutely. Like, you don't need to write the characters right off the bat. But if you have the world built and you have just a few examples of characters that exist, it's like, all right, now I know how to write a character in this world. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, it's like... And they it, only expand expand upon that the further you get into it by, by doubling down because they spent so little time and were so efficient with building the world that they can afford to spend like all of their time building characters. Yeah. And I, 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 do, I do think that world building does kind of come in second place in terms mm -hmm. of like My Hero Academia story. It's efficient. You're so right. It's, it's it like is they, efficient. they have it in little blurbs. It's, like they say, oh, this is how the, this is how the system works. Yada, da, 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 da. All right. Back to the characters. Back to how they're going to interact with this system I just explained. You're fucking reading my mind. And it literally, it is so effortless mm -hmm. because they interweave it so easily into the story with those little one-off comments, one-off little bits you know, even the bit about, um, you know, quirk marriages, that's like, mm, that's introduced that. right when we meet basically 
Todoroki, when we learn more about Todoroki, um, that is addressed immediately. And then it's it they allow Todoroki's character to speak for mm-hmm. that part of that world building because why would you explain it fully and then showcase it in a character when you could have a much more powerful story by simply mentioning it briefly giving like the definition what is a quirk marriage right. what is that whole deal why do people do it and then show the negative impacts of it through a character that we've already kind of become quite interested and attached right. to they um they 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 only tell don't show when it's like very efficient to do so yes they tell you a fact and then they proceed to show you more about it through the characters that they've written it's, so it's cool. like you don't need somebody to tell you why like you hear the word quirk like quirk marriages and you see the picture of a fire a fire type quirk user who's having problems with overheating marrying somebody with an ice quirk like uh yeah i don't i don't need to tell you more about that it's like not talking down to your audience, I think. Exactly. And I think that so many, well, like obviously My Hero Academia and plenty of other shonens, shonen anime are catered towards kids. And I think it's very easy for writers of any shows that are targeted towards kids to kind of like spoon feed information. And I think that that's really insulting because, you know, you have shows like Avatar The Last Airbender that doesn't shy away from difficult topics like imperialism or genocide because they know that, like, kids get it. Kids aren't fucking stupid. You can you can have a really compelling story with, with nuance and themes, and kids get it. They understand. Like, <clears throat> being able to write a story and have it not be completely handed to you is what makes a good show and it's and it allows it to not only cater to people that are kids and adults but also it i think it gives that show so much more longevity mm-hmm. and because I, you get more every time you rewatch it right you and notice things. i think that's something that's that's becoming in, like a lot more common in um in like newer anime mm-hmm. as opposed to like 90s early 2000s anime is that it's 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 understanding that its its audience is intelligent and that it can fill in these these gaps and, yeah and, and, and like like Naruto right and that that came out and it was I, I think it was clearly addressed to younger kids that might not understand yeah. like what it is to live in like a war torn society you know <laughs> Where, whereas like I, I feel like my hero and other things like Jujutsu Kaisen or Demon Slayer I think that they are more targeted towards young adults as opposed to kids yeah i think my hero academia is targeted towards kids though i think that but like i think but i do agree with you i think jujitsu kai's and demon slayer i think those are more mature and Mm -hmm. a little bit darker and while kids certainly watch them they probably shouldn't um because they are definitely more intense Mm -hmm. and more uh, for lack of a better word disturbing and i think this is this is a lot my hero i think has a lot of those like dark things happening yeah. but it, it does it in a lot brighter of a theme there's much more balance to it yeah which is why i loved my hero when i first started like watching anime my hero was the first anime that i've ever seen that i've ever watched ever except aside from like pokemon but why i loved it so i, I love the qualifier there of pokemon because it's yeah, technically an anime but it it's, is it's something that blew up so much yeah that it's like it's in a class of its own. It's a worldwide it's phenomenon. A it's in its a own. league. It's yeah. in a Pokemon league of its own. Shut up. You're a genius. I fucking love you. Can we cut that? We should probably cut that. I don't know. <laughs> no. No, I'm <laughs> keeping it in. You look so handsome. Thank you. You're welcome. You're pretty. Oh, thank you. Your makeup's you. good. No. Love you. She's not wearing makeup. She's just pretty like this all the time. Yeah. Um. My eyes are naturally this decorated. I came out looking snatched as fuck um what the fuck were we talking about well we were talking about i mean we could look back at the audio recording oh wait no 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 oh, hold on <laughs> no we can't wait uh we were talking about my hero how i oh the balance of like light and dark in my hero yes and then yeah, you said yeah, this yeah. was the first one you ever watched and then you said pokemon and then yes. you tried to keep talking but i cut you off yeah no it's okay i don't mind i love you um uh i, I, I when i was first was introduced to anime i was okay we're back all right (laughs) we changed cameras my phone ran out of storage (laughs) 
we were talking about how My Hero has a really good balance between um, the the really happy things and then the dark things. And I think that makes the dark things a lot easier to watch. I think the perfect example of this is season four when we have basically the first, like all of the first half of season four being very dark, very depressing, very seemingly hopeless. As as a testament, uh, first of all, I I um I envy your ability to just get right back in the groove of it because I'm so thrown off by this camera <laughs> switching and everything. Um, but as a testament to how, like, uh, how good and how like emotionally like gut wrenching season four is, um, when I was showing Scully. Uh, that season when we finally got to that season in our first together watch because I'd, I'd already seen through at that point up through uh, the end of season four uh, and I had like just seen a few episodes of season five I think when we first started watching together maybe I don't remember um, but oh my goodness like <laughs> she sees Ari in the opening and she's like oh she's so beautiful I hope nothing happens to her and I'm literally <laughs> sitting there sobbing at that comment because I'm like you have no idea and I just couldn't say anything because I'm so bad with spoilers the I got whole time. so worried because he was literally he was full on crying and I we were watching this intro I was like oh, did she die and, and all I was I like did was I no turned, they I just can't. turned away from her. he didn't even look at me like i can't i can't he's like because i'm gonna say something will reveal run. everything oh my god i was like i was like they're not gonna kill her i was like and then i don't know if you guys have seen good omens but i was like not kids they can't kill kids not kids <laughs> but it was like I, the entire first half of you know it's so sad and depressed and especially compared to the previous season where there's like you know there's hints of sort of despair mm -hmm in the earlier seasons, but it's never anything that's like debilitating until season four. And then it's like a fuck load of shit. No. And it, and it starts off with, um, with it starts off pretty innocent. Yeah. It, it starts I'm off assuming. With, with somebody who I find, uh, the million. Why can't I think of his name? Mario. <laughs> Mario my favorite character. Is, I can't fucking think of his name. Shema's stage fright. I have horrible stage fright. No, no matter how many times you get on the stage, it just comes for you. Your legs shake, and you you forget words. If it makes you feel any better, you're very cute. Thank you. You're welcome, um, Mirio. But, but it starts out with Mirio just like so. I I think he's so funny because he's so stupid. Like the hu his humor is so. He's not stupid. He's actually really smart. No, he is. Um, he's a himbo though. His humor is so stupid. It's yeah. like almost dad jokes, but like. Even even less clever. Um, the subclass of yeah. dad jokes. <laughs> uh, it's like brain dead dad jokes. Yeah. Um, but oh my God. then it just like gets right into it with the 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 seriousness and with with our our introduction to Ari and our our first um like I I think our first death of a main uh, of a, like a semi main oh, character with uh, oh yeah spoilers. Yeah, the spoilers from season of season four from here on out. Uh, With Magna. Oh, Magna! No, I literally no, like main character has died before that in the show. Yeah, well, Magna, and then of course you know like Night Eye. Right after that. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's crazy how early in the season, it's it sets that tone. Oh, it's like oh yeah, we'll 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 kill people off. And I think that <laughs> season four was really necessary because I think it humanized our villains a lot. Whereas like the first three seasons, I didn't really give a shit about the League of Villains all that much. Mm -hmm. I didn't really care. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, I guess like Dobby's like kind of right. hot. But and they're I all think crazy motherfuckers. They're all crazy, and I think Toga's funny. Like Toga's one of my favorite characters. I I immediately when I met her, I was like, she's really cool. I was like, I she's fucking crazy. She gives me Harley Quinn vibes. I love her. Um, but everyone else, I was like, I don't really care but like season four made me love twice twice is like mm -hmm. my favorite villain from the league of villains now made me love twice it made me love shigaraki like mm -hmm. all of mr like compressed like all of these villains that i was like i don't kind of could give a shit about them but i think that most good stories have a moment like that where there's like another villain that opposes our main villains and that makes us sort of humanize them like a little somebody, bit fall somebody in love with a them. little bit more evil somebody yeah who's going to willing to go a little bit further someone who's like fully cartoon super villain right. diabolical like worst of the worst um comes after them and threatens them and then you're like 
those are my villains fuck you and it's a great it's a great moment because it shows uh, it shows how smart shigaraki it is. shows how smart shigaraki is but it also sets up one of what i believe to be the most impactful we, we said from the beginning uh you know i've always said that my hero is like a a thesis dissertation on what it means to be a hero and, a, and like a discussion of all the different definitions and all the different like views on what being a hero is mm-hmm. um and it sets up one of the best depictions of that in like the very pure heroism of midoriya saving eri from the big bad uh and then in the second half of the season proceeding to save her in such a different way it's like it shows the two oh. like polarized yeah. versions of it. it's like saving somebody from actual peril. immediate per- peril is yeah. the right word for it um and then after that saving somebody from emotional, the trauma emotional trauma and the PTSD. lasting effects of being in a situation like that mm-hmm. and how it takes it takes time and it takes effort and it takes persistence to put yeah. and it's it really takes, crazy. It Her, takes Eri's really... power kind of being uh, like an allegory for like the outbursts of PTSD and like the, the more like societally isolating effects of PTSD. Sure. Like where they're like, oh, we can't take her out. And they have to go through a lot to like even take the risk of taking her to the festival. Oh, I love I, and I love Ari and I love Midoriya and Mirio's. And Aizawa's relationship with Eri and how they're all so dedicated to just making sure that she's okay. And they don't even know this girl. They don't know this girl. They're not related to her. Like, they've just met her and they've seen what she's gone through and their hearts are so poured out for this. Oh, it's just, oh my God, I love it. But I didn't even think of it that way where it's like, you're right, the first half of the season is saving her from physical distress physical peril you know whatever and then you're right the second half of her recovering recuperating from the emotional trauma is like such a real thing and another form of saving and another form and, of heroism and so and so underappreciated mm-hmm. i think in today's society but also in this fictionally depicted hero society yeah this is what that's one of like the hardest things to do and it's like the hardest that i that they work really to that point and in the the the, like standards that we've already set for what does it take to be a successful professional hero no one's getting paid anything for that no and it's not for show either fame no one's going to be like elevated in society for that that's just something that and it proves like it kind of like proves beyond a shadow of a doubt how good all of our main characters are you're so right. You're so right. I remember watching that scene for the first time where Eri is on Mirio's shoulders and they're watching the concert and Mirio, she smiles. I'm literally going to get choked up talking about it. Where she smiles and Mirio's like full on sobbing and he's like, Midoriya, sir, she's smiling. I'm literally going to cry. Oh my God. And I it, was, it's, yeah. and you're right because it's like, they're not going to be, you know, put up in their hero rankings because of this this is something like nobody saw them really do this no one's recorded this act of kindness this is just something that they want to do because they're such good people and Mm -hmm. they want to make sure that this girl's okay i love season four it shuts down a lot of the arguments of the villains in this show when it comes to the main characters yeah a lot of the arguments of the villains are that like no hero ever like goes out of their way to do something they're not gonna get paid for they are they're only, they're only doing it for show they're only doing it for fame and, and publicity is, and you're and like they, a, to their credit there is deep-rooted corruption in this and i think that most people wouldn't go out of their way to do something like this but i think it proves more to the audience that yeah izuko is the real deal he's the shit he's the guy like he's the one of course he is because look at all that he's done for not only i mean not only airy but like everybody around him like bakugo included like i i think um season three when they're doing their uh licensing exam mm-hmm. and miss joke and aizawa are both sitting in the audience and they're watching uh during like the ball the ball the ball tap game what what is it the fucking the first round where they have to tap out other people's oh, like yeah, yeah, points. The, yeah like you guys know whatever. what i'm talking about yeah but um they talk about uh aizawa 
says to Miss Joke that there are two people in the class, Bakugo and Midoriya, and he's obviously talking about them, and he's talking about how they couldn't be more different, but they both motivate each other to be better people, to be better heroes. And then in turn, that motivates the rest of the class yeah. and has a positive effect on everybody and makes everyone want to be their best. So you see Midoriya obviously directly helping people like Eri and, you know, Ochako, Ida, all these people, but then just his general presence and his desire, his pure desire to just be a good person and to be the best that he can be, inspiring literally everybody around him. And and that's something, especially for Midoriya, <laughs> rewind. Rewind. <laughs> back, back to talking about episode one. Um, in one breath, they managed to show both the best quality of Midoriya and his worst quality in like almost the same sentence. And it's right when he's watching Bakugo about to be murdered by this slime monster. <laughs> Yuck, oh, by the way. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> Scully refuses to watch like mo like any section of the first episode that includes him. The slime monster, I can't. It makes me like <laughs> literally want to throw up. Like that whole scene is so unsettling to me. Fuck that guy. Um, Continue. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um But it shows that he at once he he blames himself for like oh, oh, that's not that's not his fault he didn't do that on purpose he didn't set that thing free again on purpose but like he blames himself he holds himself responsible responsible for it just like throughout the whole rest of the show we're gonna see instances of him like feeling like everything's his responsibility oh. he has to hold the whole world and it only gets worse as he gets more powerful because mm -hmm. it's it's the great power with great power comes great responsibility whole like dilemma of like the stronger he's getting the more responsible he feels um for everything for that's everybody happening. else yeah, yeah. Because... well is that it's, it's in one of the spider movies like yeah the spider-man movies he says like uh when you're that powerful and you can do something and the bad things happen and, bad things happen, and you don't do fault. and you don't do anything it's your fault it's yeah your fault. that's tom Holland's, so that's yeah. that's how Civil he feels War. but then in the next breath we see also that he is unwilling to watch someone suffer he's mm -hmm. unwilling he just simply can't it's it's like biologically impossible for Midoriya to look at somebody in pain peril of suffering and just walk and away not, yeah and not do anything yeah. and that's and that trait the best trait of him is what grants him the opportunity exactly he well i think it's it's so funny because i i've been wanting to do a little lead into all might and i think this is perfect too yeah, because please. midoriya always had those traits of seeing someone in peril and wanting to help them because he's a good person and all might always had those traits too but i think that they both almost uh enable those traits in each other where they feel this immense guilt when the bad things happen and they don't do anything or they can't do anything mm -hmm. and they feel like it's their fault when he learned it from watching him yeah he learned that's true that's true he learned it from watching all might and i think that the way that all might is built up initially as this like infallible being and he's this this sort of herculean legend the perfect like hero the perfect hero like no flaws no weaknesses nothing number one the number one uh he it, it, i i always when i first start, started watching the show i thought he was going to be like a villain because i was like there's no way that this character that's seemingly infallible and looks kind of terrifying it, it, the, the fact that like he, he, the darkness over his eyes yeah I, I honestly like i see why you'd think that and i was like golden boy red flag I'm that's just how I feel. He's, then, he's sacrificing someone for all that power. He's, right. he's doing something dark in the background. He did something. He made a deal with the devil. But then we see him, obviously, in all his skinny, shrimpy glory for who he actually is. And immediately I was like, oh, my God, I love him because he goes from golden boy to kind of angsty boy. And he talks about how he smiles to hide the fear of his weakness. And he knows that, like, the world is depending on him. He is always everybody's last mm -hmm. call like it's... oh well all might's here so he'll fix everything and he is even like i love the fact that even all might can't be all might right and it's, our, it's our first um it's our first like hint at what we'll eventually see as a pattern of all might is he he, he obviously is what midoriya wants to be but he's also like the doomed fate of midoriya if no one 
like helps him learn from All Might's mistakes. Yes. Of like, if you just keep trying to do it all yourself and you just keep throwing yourself headlong into these fights, you're going to save people, but then you're going to be worn out. You're going to be worn down to the fact that you can't save anyone anymore. You're going to die so young. And Gran Torino, I think, is the best example because he's seen both. He's seen All Might. He's seen, he's seen Nana. He's seen Nana Shimura, how she met her end. He's seen All Might grow up and make the same mistakes. And he's seeing Midoriya kind of go through that same pattern. And I remember that scene so fondly after Gran Torino has Midoriya for the little internship. And he talks to All Might afterwards. He talks to Toshinori. And he says... You know that boy is a lot like you, and he, and All Might thinks it's like a good thing. And Gran Torino's like, compliment. not a compliment. <laughs> Where Gran Torino's like, he's an older guy. He's kind of jaded, but he's realistic and he's practical. And he and he knows that this method of of saving people is not sustainable, and that you need to accept help anywhere you can get it. Because when you put yourself in a position where you're doing everything, pretty soon you're not going to be able to do anything and and it also is um it's a strong suit of midoriya and something i think he's more capable of doing than all might ever was is like thinking forward thinking ahead he has the ability like where all might kind of excelled with the fact that his sheer willpower i think propelled him forward a lot of the time which you know midoriya also has but i think to a lesser degree than all might ever did Mm -hmm. um Midoriya's strong suit that he has to learn to rely on after he has this power because once he has that power he's kind of like dependent on it and he's like learning just how to use it but his planning and his ability to like think through things logically is what saves him in a lot of situations yeah and I think also because that also has to do with the fact that when he gets All Might's power he can't really use it all that much he can't control it so he has to be smart with how he uses it. He's like, I know I'm going to break my fucking fingers. So how do I do this? So I can actually recover from this later right. on. Like he, he, he has to be smarter because he can't control this massive power that has continued to grow since all might gave it to him, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But, uh, I love Midoriya. When I first saw the show, I was so like out on him. I was like, oh, he's such a fucking crybaby, like whatever. But he is, so good and he is so pure and it's it's hard not to love people like that because especially like you know in real life people can be assholes and take advantage of you and whatever but even in this world where corruption is so deeply rooted in the fabric of society in the celebrity of heroes in you know the the media that portray them in the police that that you know help them like it's so rare to find people that are so selfless that really just want to help other people and i think the more that i learn about the world of my hero and the more that i see izuku grow and kind of have to come to terms with how corrupt the world is but still standing by his ideals like i think i think that's really he stands by his ideals and eventually it like takes him out of the system you know, he, he's originally kind of oh like, it's gosh. very much like a, I will be part Spoilers. of the system. And yeah, it's a spoiler. Yeah, that's definitely a spoiler. But all I, right. Well, we're getting into manga spoilers now. So I know, I'm, I'm not going to go into details of that yeah. yet. But yes. Um, oh, yeah, wait, no, I had, I had a point. I had a point that actually is not about that. at all. Oh, the first thing that I noticed about Midoriya and the thing that really drew me to his character is that he's different from a lot of shonen protagonists in that he's not like there are in in some ways he is an airhead in terms of like social norms and being like oh awkward, yeah he's but so he's awkward not, he's not even like outwardly dumb you know a lot no. of protagonists are like outwardly dummies <laughs> like like strong <laughs> dummies uh or or at least like Eat that determined dummies um that have some something special about them but Matoya at the beginning has no special power he's just smart he's just yeah and not even like naturally smart he just works really hard and is i i saw because i started watching this in college he's he was a student you know 
that mm-hmm. and that really resonated with me. It's like somebody who's working really hard to overcome his uh, his weaknesses by just if I can just learn everything about what all these heroes are doing, I can learn all their their ways of dealing with situations. I can be an expert at that. Then I can become a hero. I'll, I'll figure it out. And that just like really resonated with me. He gives his all. Yeah, he really does. He gives and, his all. And he so, does. Yeah. He does. He not only puts in the work, but he puts in the extra work. Too much work. Too much. Yeah. But to the point where he's he's battered and and broken and. <laughs> but I think this. Well, I think also. But his friends help him with that. His friends tell him like, "Hey, exactly. can you like chill the fuck out? Because we want to make sure that you can live to see graduation." And I also I was thinking about this earlier, when. Izuku gets to UA, that's the first time he, like, actually has, like, friends. Like, this is the first time where he is more popular than Bakugo, and he is respected, and he is cared about, and he is he is of interest to people, mm-hmm. you know? Like, Uraka and Ida in particular, they gravitate towards him immediately and, and, and stay by his side, you know? It's, it's kind of cool to see because... He's almost like there's almost like a little bit of justice there because you feel so bad for him when he gets beaten and battered in the first fucking scene of the show, you know, by young Bakugo. And, you know, you see him getting bullied and and Bakugo telling him to fucking kill himself. Like all these things. You're like, oh, my God, this kid's just trying to live his life. Mm -hmm. And then he gets to UA and he finds these incredible people and quickly becomes friends with them. And you're like, oh, good. He's safe. Like I felt like sending my kid off to school. Like, oh, good. He's made friends. He's okay. And the relationship (laughs) between Midori and Bakugo, I think, is so, so interesting. And they start right from the beginning showing how complex that relationship is like it starts off it's it's very clear that he's it's not even really clear why he's bullying midoriya from the beginning like why are you just bullying this random like wide-eyed kid is it just because you're like a mean person yeah just because you're a dick and it becomes clear like the further you get into the show i I think it culminates what is it is it the season two finale or the season three finale where they fight season three because it's a licensing exam and, and Midoriya yes. passes and Bakugo and, and, doesn't. And, yeah, so see, it kind of it's there. It doesn't really finish there, but it, like, it really, everything's finally addressed there. It kind of comes to a peak, though. Up, up until then, it's just like very unclear. Why is Bakugo so angry he's, at Midoriya? And it's because he's in. He's so insecure. Yeah. And I think even though, well, we, I mean, we talk about like during that fight, obviously, when Midoriya gets his license, and Bakugo doesn't. Obviously, he's insecure because Midoriya has done something that he hasn't. But even before that, like the entire show, he is incredibly insecure by everything that Midoriya does. But the fact that Midoriya is always trying and he never gives up frightens Bakugo because Bakugo has this natural uh, benefit, not, not benefit advantage privilege for lack of a better word to be strong to be a hero and yet midori is still trying deku's still trying to be a fucking hero and what is he getting, doing he's getting and then as it progresses he's getting stronger so much faster yeah than 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 bakugo like bakugo kind of like has hit like this level and he's like slowly slowly getting better but it's like he, he hasn't had any, to try he doesn't have any rush or drive to like get really really stronger uh because he's pretty much never lost other than like that one super villain at the beginning that he's yeah. just trying to like i but, think he just tries to like block out that that ever happened but as a kid he's <laughs> always been the best yeah he's always been the best he's always been number one and that has never been threatened by anyone except midoriya mm-hmm. and i think oh it's just so good it's Good. I also forgot that we have thirsty thoughts, and I was planning on reading them 15 minutes in, and now we're probably All right. like 35 minutes in, so we'll do some thirsty thoughts. Okay. Mm. All right. Welcome to the segment called Thirsty Thoughts, where you send me your thirsty thoughts about any anime character of your choosing, and I read them on the podcast. If you would like to submit your entries to Thirsty Thoughts, you can send them to Scully and Shem at gmail.com. That's S K U L L I E and S H E M at gmail.com. We have a joint Gmail. Yeah, we do. I set it up for us, baby. 
Yeah. Isn't that so exciting? This is a big step. It's a big step. <laughs> I know we live together, We're but dating, it's like email. Uh, by the way, um, I don't know if that was clear. Definitely not clear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get started. So I have seen these. Shem has not. Um, and uh, yeah, so I posted about this on my TikTok. So if you're coming from my TikTok, welcome. Hello. Um, and if yours is not on here, don't worry. I still got it. We're saving it for another episode. I got a huge <laughs> amount of emails and they were all amazing. I'm going to read them all. Don't worry. But um, I can only fit so many in an episode. So we're going to do three here and I'll save the others for another episode. So the first one is from uh, Anime is for Weebs on TikTok, um, talking about Endeavor from MHA, post getting his face scar, which is, I think is an interesting era of Endeavor. And I actually would agree that I think he got better looking with his scar, but I think that's just because I like damaged folk. <laughs> I have no thoughts. Quote, I want to play bongos on his titties. <laughs> and... I agree. I just feel like they would be very uh, dense and probably not have a lot of resonance. Why are you going to ruin our fun? However, <laughs> I do think that it would be euphoric. Euphoric is a great But word it just wouldn't make a great sound is what I'm saying. I don't think that's the goal. I'm dense as a brick. I think it's to feel those tiggle biddies. The next entry, also <laughs> from Animes for Weebs. Thank you, my darling. Uh, talking about Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen. I would let him go overtime on this pussy. And to that, I would also agree. I don't have that biological piece, so I <laughs> cannot comment <laughs> on, that, <laughs> on that particular comment. But, you know, I like the, I like the wordplay. The, the yeah the the line is great yeah uh, Nanami is great any anyone who enjoys Aizawa or Lloyd Forger from Spy Family mm. would enjoy Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen he is a delight and a grumpy dilf to boot um, Shem is aware of my love of grumpy dilfs mm. okay the next entry is from Levi V lol I just saw your TikTok and firstly I'm so excited for the podcast thank you Levi. <laughs> Second, I want to share some thirsty thoughts as a gay man because guys being gay for anime guys isn't really talked about much on my For You page. Hmm. Stupid algorithm. And I would agree with that. It's not talked about nearly enough. I pretty much simp for any adult man in the MHA universe. Hawks and Dobby could take me to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Aizawa could use the, that capture weapon on my body since he's already got my heart. And another Endeavor thirsty thought. Endeavor, bad person as he is, is so fucking thick and built. I don't need his backstory. I just want him to sleep with me, right? And to that, Levi, I would say, yes, I agree. Actually, I'm pretty sure that that Aizawa comment um, or something similar to it was what sparked the idea of the thirsty thoughts in the first oh. place. <laughs> Which was your video. Well, my video, but of you. Yes. Okay. So I, I and, and if you haven't seen it, basically, I when when asked about whether or not or, or speculating on whether or not uh, Aizawa would use the capture weapon, the the scarf, uh, in, in in a kinky way, in a bondage way, I responded, I think that he might consider that mixing work and play. The exact <laughs> quote, and I'm sure you've seen it on my page because it fucking blew up and it was hilarious, <laughs> was me asking Shem to repeat himself and him going, do you think that Aizawa is into bondage in bed or do you think that he thinks that that's mixing work and play? Which is, I stand by. <laughs> I stand by my opinion that it is it is the the latter of that. <laughs> and it's a great it's a great question, Which but is yeah, because there's a lot of you know there's a lot of thirsty thoughts to have about that. And I saw it in general. And I just you know I think it's non canon is all I'm saying. Mm. I think that that's a fair assumption. I think a lot of people said that uh, he does it because Mike enjoys it. Hmm. Care, care to comment? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, anyways, good luck on the podcast. Oh, and can you use the name Levi V? Yep, awesome. Can't wait to tune in. Thank you, Levi. Very, very nice message. Uh, Lancelot. And also, 
I want to point out that the subject line for this email read, you asked for this, unfiltered thirst. <laughs> and I appreciate that. You asked for this. And I love this, and I agree with this very wholeheartedly. You know what? Small might might actually get bitches. Koshin or Yagi may be designed to look unappealing, but to me, he's just the right amount of sc scrunkly that I would 100% peg and or ride if given the chance. I would take him out to dinner first, of course, but literally just get my hands on this man. I mean, he's an absolute gentleman, and maybe a little love might prolong his life by a smidge or whatever. <laughs> but the way I'd give it all up just to give him some solid head before a one to two hour snuggle, the man deserves it. Toshinori Yagi can text to smash me pretty please and thank you. Also, if you need another one of these, let me know. I've got a paragraph on Mr. Compress overhaul <laughs> and fat gum in my drafts. Thank you. I hope you see all of those. I'm actually going to take the lead on this one. Um, <laughs> number one, I am unfamiliar with the term scrunkly, so that threw me for a loop. Number two, I 100% agree uh, he's a gentleman. He is a great guy, and he, he, deserves, he deserves the world. He 100%. deserves a lot of kindness and love. Mm -hmm. Three, he's a hard worker, and I think you know any type of um, service offered to him would be a public service as well. <laughs> Rest and recuperation is important. <laughs> I'd be able to up that, you know, amount of time he can do hero work if he's if he's got that type of excitement. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> you lost me at public service. That is so funny. No, but he would. I think he would be a very tender lover. I think because there's so much that's gone wrong and wrong in his life that like if he found someone that made him happy, he would fucking cherish you. I think he's too atrophy to be like a aggressive lover. Yeah, he would be very tender, very soft, very sweet. Mm -hmm. I also I too enjoy Small Might very much. I think that he's very underrated and underappreciated, and I think that Small Might in particular is far more domestic. Than All Might, I think he's more dad-like and more like caring in general. He's retired. Tender. He's retired. He's a retired <laughs> fellow. But he's also just like he's just softer. Yeah. Like even like the voice actor, so Christopher S Christopher Sabat, I think that's his name. I don't know. Um, the English voice actor. His literal voice is just like different. Like when he talks in his All Might voice, it's like this, and, and then when he talks in Small Might, it's more like this. Like it's like his normal voice um oh but i love him he is he's scrunkly i just want to i just want to climb on him <laughs> i'm still waiting on a definition of scrunkly i think it speaks for itself i don't think you need to define it sure i think it, if you look at small mite and you say that that boy's scrunkly i think you kind of get like i mean i get the gist it's like scraggly but also scrawny and Scrum. Uncle. Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, we got two more. I thought you said you were only going to do three. I know. I forgot. There's one that's really, um, that's really short. But here's another one. Okay, this is from Lil Evie. I want to have a threesome with Kojiro Nanjo and Koaru Sakura Shiki. Fucking nailed it. Like, so bad. Like, for real, go to France. Eiffel Tower, if you know, you know. I had two Eiffel Tower thirsty thoughts in a row. <laughs> and explore each other's bodies. I just know they're both packing. Do people actually do Eiffel Towers and threesomes? I've never been a party to that. I've never been in a threesome with men, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> All right, that's the extent of our expertise on the subject. Um, let us know. No, don't let us know in the comments. This video is going to get flagged. Okay, enjoy this funny image from Instagram. Uh, oh, and then it's a picture of Kaoru with text over it going, why do you as a man have long hair for other men to pull? Have you seen that meme where it's like, no. why do you have glasses to see other men gay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have not, but that's pretty good. I think it's a play off that one. Um, also, when you read off the names of the two characters, I just did not recognize them because I thought they were both going to be 
my hero characters and i was, oh, was yes. not expecting that I was like oh okay cherry blossom and joe got it yes yes cherry, <laughs> oh so yeah sorry for those of you who don't know cherry blossom and joe from skate the infinity are uh great, Kaoru great and anime. kojiro um and then the last one is from anonymous i identify very strongly as asexual but dobby and hawks are two characters that completely and utterly destroy that part of me and i have no issues with it they're hot as hell thank you anonymous if anyone else would like to submit their thirsty thoughts, I am always so excited to read them. You guys have been fucking knocking it out of the park. There's so many more. I cannot wait to share all of them. You're seriously all killing it. Um, please send to the Gmail. I'll have it linked in the description as well, so it's just easy for you to click on it. But yeah, um, that's our thirsty thoughts. <laughs> I think We're also I'm, running up on an hour now. I think, yeah, I was just going to say, I think that might be a good place to wrap up. I also have to, have to pee. You also have to pee? Okay, well, fair enough. Okay, hold on. Before we before we peace out, you want to tell them what uh, shows we've been watching lately? Uh, yes. We have been watching Spy Family. Oh, my God. Which is, I, I highly recommend. Oh, it's really, really great content. Really, really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Great uh, balance of uh, action, comedy, and intrigue. And romance. And romance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've been watching um, uh, Bungo, Stray Dogs. Bing Bong, Ping Pongs. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> every, we said it. <laughs> Bunghole, great dogs. I don't want anyone dogs. to think I'm being racist. We, <laughs> so I want to clarify. I know, two thirds of that are I was English in, words. So I, was I, interest, can be. I was interested in watching Bungo, Stray Dogs. And Sean heard me say it once but didn't know what the name of the show bing was bong, when he recalled it so he was like do you want to watch bing bong stray dogs <laughs> and <laughs> anytime we mention that we're gonna watch bongo stray dogs as a suggestion we use any word but the words initially in the title guapo ding dong guapo ding dongs <laughs> old man ping pongs <laughs> Anyway, um, so that's that's been a good show too. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit. It's more more like classically shown and really. Yeah, um, I would say but that. But still, like very interesting, and I I I consider it to be very unique, um, in its character, very fun characters, and, yeah, like in its plot in general. Mm-hmm. Um, what else have we been watching? Like very recently, we've been watching. We I mean we finished uh, Disastrous Life of Psyche K a oh, little bit yeah. ago, which was really really good and very funny, easy watch, very comforting show, very low stakes. Oh, and then Gaku and Babysitters. Oh, School Gaku babysitters. and Babysitters. That is the ultimate comfort show. If you can, if you can, rush to Crunchyroll and watch Gaku and Babysitters. It's the most wholesome show I've ever seen in my entire life. It's perfect. Um, I've also been reading Given, which is a gay boy band manga. I think it's an anime now too. But it's really good. I literally just finished the first volume, and I am absolutely obsessed. I can't wait to read more. But I think that's it. I've been watching on my own the the most recent season of One Piece. Yes. Um, which is a tall order to ask anyone to watch it if you haven't watched One Piece at all, as the latest episode is number 1019. So, you know... And there's not really a lot of filler. <laughs> it's all plot. It's kind of all... Well, uh, <laughs> everything kind of matters. So, you know, indulge, obsess, and binge at your own risk. Yeah. Um, but I think that's everything we've been watching. Yeah. And we're, we're, you know, we're working our way through My Hero. We're probably going to rewatch Demon Slayer again soon. I oh, might, yeah. I might rewatch Jujutsu Kaisen again soon. But, um, but yeah, those are pretty much what we've been watching, listening to. I think we're going to head out now. Thank you so much for tuning in to the first episode of the Scully and Shem podcast. Uh, as you can see, this podcast is sponsored by us. If you'd like to donate to help this podcast running, I have my Kofi coffee, I forget how to pronounce that huh? website, and my PayPal in oh. the description below. So you can donate a couple bucks if you're up for it. If not, just by liking, subscribing, commenting, things like that. It helps us out a lot. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for future episodes, let us know. We have a couple that are planned. We have some guest appearances that we'd like to do. Um, we have one that we already shot that the audio got all screwed up. <laughs> and that's like an hour of content that we'll never get back from our lives. But That is lost forever. You'll never see it. The lost episode of the Scully and Shem podcast gone if forever. If you give us uh, $500, we'll send you the raw audio files. 
And you can edit it for us. <laughs> you pay us to edit our video. <laughs> it was a good episode. It was a good episode. It so. was fine. I think this one was a lot better. I think we kind of needed a dry run, to be fair. A dress rehearsal, have you? A dress rehearsal, have you? I have to pee so bad. All right, he's got to pee. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye.